I watch it. I got it. Going live on Facebook. Winning cures everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up, what up, what up? We are officially back. Finally, it took an entire month, but we made it. So we are here. Uh, you know how this thing goes. Winning cures everything podcast number 214. It is Tuesday, May 29th at 6.15 p.m. Central Time. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, we're going to talk about the Warriors Cavs uh, Part Four. Uh, we're going to talk the college football game of the year lines. We'll talk some surprises. Uh, what Vegas thinks of all of that mess right now. We'll uh, we'll get into all sorts of stuff. We'll talk about legalized sports gambling because we have not had an opportunity to do so. So we will discuss that. We're going to talk about rules and regulations. Questions that we have about it. We're going to talk about whether or not SEC football and basketball. Stadiums and arenas should allow alcoholic beverages inside the stadium. If you want to go to an Alabama football game or an LSU football game right now, you can't buy a beer inside the stadium. That's kind of weird in today's society. So, uh, we'll talk about all that different stuff. As always, the show is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. Use promo code WCE50 for a 50% deposit bonus. They are the best online sports book out there. Still go use them. If you're in the state of Mississippi, it is completely legal. Already jumping in on Facebook, you can buy beer at a Memphis Tigers game. Yes, that it's is be- not on campus. It's not on campus. You Neither of their stadiums or arenas you, are on campus. But you can't buy one at uh, an NCAA game when they come to the FedEx Forum. No, because that is an NCAA event, NCAA-sanctioned event. So, anyway, uh, so as we were saying, mybookie.ag, promo code WCE50, that is a 50% deposit bonus. Sign up, knock that thing out, go make your bets on the Warriors or the Cavs. If you think the Cavs are going to win, you are getting some awesome lines right now. I think they're like plus 720 to win the series right now. If you think the Warriors are going to win... There's really no sense in even betting they're at, like, minus 1,200 for the series right now. So your main money really is going to be what game do you think they're going to be done in because all those are in the pluses right now. Yeah, you can pick an individual game or you can, you know, bet the line, get even money almost. Bet the line, bet the line. Lay the minimum juice. But at that point, you got to bet, like, uh, 12 points or something. So, no, I mean, <laughs> like, just, game one is just It's bonkers. gambling. It's not supposed to be easy. Oh, no, no, no. You're right about that. Uh, the other thing that the uh, the podcast is brought to you by, the website, winningcureseverything.com. News, information, blah, blah, blah. We'll be getting to a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, first, Chris, we took a month off. Because I am now a father for the second time. You have already had two. I've got two. I'm done. I now have my second. Hopefully, I'm done as well. <laughs> I don't well, know if you I know get what to... causes that. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that I really get to have much say in the matter. Uh, oh, you get a, you get a lot of say. Well, but that's the issue. Like I, I don't want to stop that. I mean, <laughs> what what man wants to stop that? Uh, I got a doctor I, t- I, t- I introduced you to one of these days where she's not around. Well, see, that it, if I did that without her permission, that might be grounds for divorce. Not uh, all a divorce. No, now that you got a baby, she ain't leaving. Oh, I don't know about don't that. Don't nobody want to take care of that thing by himself. Now, you, you're right about that. That's too much work. Oh, Lord, he definitely is. So, here's the deal. We didn't anticipate being gone for this long. Um, baby was born on May 1st. Late that night, uh, the wife woke up. At 5.30 in the morning, this was before my alarm clock went off. My alarm clock wasn't scheduled to go off until 5.45. At 5.30, she's going, Gary, Gary. And I said, what? Like, I finally woke up, turned around. She was standing in the bathroom, like, poking her head out. I said, yeah, yeah, what? What's up? She said, my water just broke. And I I literally gave her the peace sign, said, cool, and put my head back on the pillow. And it took me a few minutes to act, well, a few seconds, really, to actually realize what was happening at this point. Jumped out of bed. We already had all the bags packed for the hospital. We're rolling right along. Turns out my wife is the the 10% of women whose water broke before contraction started, before labor started. 
So contractions didn't start for another 15 minutes, and they were hardcore. I'm talking bad to the bone, dude. So 5.45 contractions going on. She jumps in the shower to kind of ease the intensity and all that kind of mess. We uh, we leave. We get to the hospital at 7.15. So we are in the hospital room by 7.30. And around 2 o'clock, they decide this whole natural birth thing ain't for you. You're getting an epidural. You You got to do all this other stuff, whatever else is going on. Because, I mean, these things were intense. They were hardcore, man. It was, they, they called it coupling and tripling. Did you, you no, ever heard that? No, no, I try not to. All right, so, so contractions are like hardcore. I was if there you, for the conception. If you've ever. <laughs> I was there when it was over. <laughs> if you've ever been around a woman that's in labor, contractions are no joke, man. Like, that stuff is insane. So, she is having really intense contractions. She wanted no drugs. She wanted this to be completely natural. And I thought, there ain't no way. Like, I, my wife is one of the I, strongest women I know. I need drugs just talking about it right <laughs> now. Like, I kind of wish I had some. I wished I had some drugs for all right, this stuff. Right now, just just talking about yeah. it. Yeah. So, so, finally, they decide, all right, well, these things, the coupling and tripling is where the contractions are like 30 seconds apart. They're supposed to be spaced like a minute, minute and a half, whatever it is. They were only spaced like 20 to 30 seconds, and they were two minutes of just intense pain, right? And she is freaking out and just exhausted because it's been seven hours of this crap. And I'm exhausted because I'm trying to be there with her through this whole thing. And one of the, so one of the contractions, I'm rubbing her back, and she's like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's fine. That helps. 30 seconds goes by, another one starts. I start rubbing her back the exact same way that I did before. This woman turns and looks at me and goes, don't touch me. (laughs) I'm talking demonic. Like, demons from a thousand different hells jumped into her body at that point. And I go to take a step back. And I'm going back to sit down on the bench that's over across the room. And she gives me the puppy dog eyes. Where are you going? I'm like, I don't understand what is going on right now. You didn't want me to touch you, but I can't leave. I had to I had to sit with her in the restroom. She was taking a shower, but she wanted to hold my hand while she's in the shower. I'm still clothed. I'm sitting outside of the shower on a medicine ball. Or whatever those things are called. You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. I'm sitting outside of the shower with my arm in the shower, holding her hand for 25 minutes. All kind of stuff. I should win husband of the year for what we went through during this whole thing. Either way, baby comes out. Baby's not breathing for the first 20 minutes. It's not good. I am freaking out. We've got to I put the whole story up on on the website, winningcureseverything.com. Put the whole thing up, but it, it took forever. He didn't cry. He didn't take a breath for 20 minutes and 31 seconds. I will never forget it as long as I live because as soon as we heard that first little bitty cry, everything was cool. But we were freaking out that whole time. So now we went through all that. The labor was intense, uh, 15 plus hours. I know. Lord, a lot of women have gone way longer, but this was bonkers for uh, for us. And during the delivery, my wife developed a sciatic nerve issue. You ever heard of this? Well, I know what the sciatic nerve is. So, I mean, I know we all have that. Her right leg goes out. Like, just it, it's not that it goes numb. It you just completely lose it. So she's had a few it, falls. It didn't like fall off. No, it didn't fall off. It's like you, there's just no feeling, no nothing, and it just it it goes limp, and you can't walk. Like if you are walking when this happens, you are going to fall. Yeah, you just go down. So she's had to go down like four or five times already. She fell in the hospital that first night. We thought it might have just been the epidural. That wasn't it. So so now we've had to go to physical therapy. I'm having to deal with that two times a week. Uh, she is down in Alabama right now, 
and hopefully she and baby Lincoln are having a good time with uh, with his Gigi, enjoying themselves. I've been back up here going to work and now doing the uh, the podcast again. It's nice to be back. I've I've gotten to watch some sports in the meantime. Mainly, I'm just keeping up with scores. I don't get to watch a whole lot. But I did get to watch the last two Game 7s. So let's go on and move into that. Let's talk about Warriors-Cavs. The Cavaliers beat the Boston Celtics on Sunday night, 87-79. The Golden State Warriors beat the Houston Rockets 101-92 last night. So, um, I mean... Give me thoughts. What it is this? Was this expected by you? Like, no, I had no idea what was going to happen in the Cavs game. <clears throat> um, Boston played so well at home. That's the only game at home they lost um, in the entire playoffs. In the whole playoffs, not in this series. In the in all the playoffs, um, played really well. Just couldn't make shots at all. Had no answer. Um, not that the Cavs played great. Boston just didn't show up. And I don't know that they didn't show up. That team should not have been as good as they were supposed. Like they, they weren't that good. Does that no. make sense? No, they 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 were too young. The real team showed up. Yeah, they in they game were too. Seven. Well, the real the real player showed up for yeah. the Cavs because that's that's what this was. This was LeBron James' series. Like it's it, if you're the greatest player of all time or one of the greatest players of all time. You can't be losing to a bunch of kids. Like the NBA they, they call the NBA no boys allowed. No, no, no. no. You know? Had he lost had they lost that series, that's not a knock on his legacy at all. Not a knock at all because he is playing with, with him and nobody four around plumbers. Him. It really pissed me off. I'm gonna just put this out there. J.R. Smith holding that Eastern Conference trophy up, dancing with it in the locker room. Brother, you need to put that down and you don't get to touch it. At all. He didn't you don't do get to anything. dance at all. That guy was complete garbage from beginning to end of this entire season so far. And now you're going to dance like you did something? Yeah. He was play- He might as well have been playing with four pl- plumbers out there. Oh, like yeah. I-, I got subs in my phone that I could call to build a house. They go play with Braun. Put up bricks just like they were putting up bricks. Were you surprised at all that they lost more? Morgan- like they were two and three when Kevin Love played. And then they lose Kevin Love. They win the last two games. Do you think no, it would have no, no, mattered no, no. if he had played at all? No, 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 no. I don't think so. Would they have lost those games had he played? No. That's what I'm trying to no, figure out. No, because they didn't lose in Cleveland much the whole series. I don't know that they lost any games. No, they, no, they, they didn't lost, lose any. No, because they, they they're lost, only game. I thought they lost to Indiana. They lost to Indiana and Cleveland. Um, oh yeah, game one. Yeah, they game lost one. Indiana and Cleveland. But but they didn't they didn't lose many games at home, so they weren't going to lose that game without him. And and. Kevin Love would have played just as good as the rest of the guys that didn't do a whole lot in Game Seven. Yeah, Game Seven was was just a, a weird. So no, the, the the Kevin Love hate needs to stop too. I mean, he's a really good player. He's not being used properly there. That's Ty Lue's fault. He's one of the worst coaches in the NBA. <laughs> to hear to, when they won Game Seven, to hear uh, Van Gundy talking on you know Ty Lue needs to get credit for for winning you know the Eastern Conference with this team. No, no. LeBron what, what, what gets do you mean all this of team? this. LeBron gets all of the credit for winning with this team. Ty Lue gets none of the credit. He has not made a single player better on this team since being under his tutelage. Not not one. Kevin Love is not is he's worse today than he was when he was playing in Minnesota. The the only player that Shumpert, hasn't that uh, hasn't uh, like uh, uh, digressed. Um, the only player that hasn't digressed is LeBron. Is LeBron. Yeah, and he's superhuman. Yeah, he's just he's just not natural. It's it it is really just strange to see. Uh, did, do you think the NBA wanted this? No, I honestly think the NBA is smart enough to realize they need fresh blood. They they needed either the Rockets or the, or Celtics, the Celtics or both. Yeah, like even a series with both both, both would have gotten a mega rating for the playoffs, a mega rating for the yeah. finals. But if you've got Houston and, and freaking Boston. yeah. Yeah, you got, you got a mega rating for the playoffs. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm so with they, you. So they they didn't they didn't want this to think that the NBA wanted this is is just wrong. I I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't think they wanted a part four. Um, now tell me, would you rather watch a four game sweep with every game being competitive, 
this go round, or would you rather watch seven games of blowouts, kind of like we had with uh, with Boston and in that's Cleveland? A, that's a really hard question. My initial reaction is four game sweep because I like to see good games. But here's the problem: once you get to game four, just because it's a good game, the series is over, so that game is moot. You you might as well be playing an interleague game or a preseason game. It does not count. It does not matter because it will not affect the outcome of the series. Right. Once, once and the team I, is and up 3 nothing, it's not going to I know matter. that they could come back from 3-0. It's just not happening. It's yeah. not happening. So, it, here's the thing. If somehow the Cavs got up 3-0, the Warriors could come back and win four straight. But, but A, nobody can foresee that. And then, B, there's no way on earth if the Cavs got down 3-0, they can come back. Or 0-3, they could come back and win. It's just not against this Warriors team. It's just not possible. I think you're probably right. So, I don't know how to answer that. There's a part of me that – you know, I don't like knowing the outcome of the series before the game starts. I'm noticing it's it's a little dark in here. I'm going to turn on that light real quick, but I want you to answer this question while I'm okay. jumping up to do that. I can do that. Does LeBron have any chance at all in this series? Like, tell me, do you put any stock in the six-year streak of LeBron winning a title when Alabama wins a title? I know that's ridiculous, but it it no, is a streak. It's just... It's just another reason to talk about Alabama. Is it, well, no, is, it's a, no, no. is it a coincidence? No, or? it's not a coincidence. It's ridiculous. It's just preposterous. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go, talk to go, me about go turn the damn light on. All right. Um, I, I put a ton of stock in LeBron winning eight straight Eastern Conference fi- uh, championships and going to the finals. I think that is a, a mark or a feat that should be recognized. We, we say eight, and we think, oh, man, that's a big number in sports. But it wasn't until the other night when he actually did it that I realized my daughter's not even eight years old. Like, every year she's been alive, and I feel like she's been around forever, okay? Like, she's always there. She doesn't go anywhere. She stays with us constantly. And so it's just one of those things, and that's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. But it's just like she's not even eight years old. Her entire life she doesn't know anything other than LeBron Dad, James being in yeah, the finals. LeBron and, James going to the finals. Like, like there are, there's going to be an entire generation of middle school kids that didn't start watching basketball till they were, you know, six years old that doesn't know anything other than this. Oh, it's. I mean, my daughter is twelve. Yeah. The last time LeBron was not in the finals, she was what three? Yeah. It, it's just, it's pretty remarkable when you kind of put it in perspective of that. Um, and then you think of the kids that he's playing against, some of these players that he just played against in Boston. The last time he didn't make a final, Tatum was like six years old, eight years old, something like that. I mean, it was something crazy. No, he'd see, he was like 11, uh, 11. He was yeah, 11. Was, it was him with a jersey on playing like Little League basketball. But it's just like that's insane, you know? Yeah, that's, that's – the and whole thing is bonkers. I think, I think his path to what he has done is amazing. Um, it's, and this year has been the most impressive out of them all. Here's the thing that I don't like of the knock on LeBron. So everybody does the LeBron Jordan comparison and his biggest knock is he doesn't have that killer instinct or that attitude that Jordan had. I don't know that there's anybody on the planet outside of, you know, three or four of the greatest players, athletes of all time in their sport that have that. So that's a bullcrap comparison is an yeah. attitude and a mental uh, toughness and ability compared to the guy that was kind of the god of that. Yeah. I mean, LeBron is, is, is by all sense and purposes, hugs on the other team, encourages other players, talks to other players across the league, goes to do banana boat stuff with other guys. Jordan didn't do that crap. Jordan wanted to beat you. He wanted to embarrass you in front of your mama. He wanted to make you cry. He had something in him that most people don't have. So to so to knock LeBron for not, I guess, wanting to say being an asshole during all this, I think that's a bull crap knock. If you want to compare numbers and other things, which I think it's impossible well, even then, to do you, during yeah, eras. You can't do it between eras. And it's one, he's played a completely different position. Like and I understand where you're coming from with like Jordan always had the ball yeah. in his hands. LeBron's always got the ball in his it, hands. It's just, but it's, it's just one of those different. things. The only knock on LeBron is he. Tell, tell me this right quick. What do you think the Twitter, you know, social media age would think of the way that Michael Jordan was back then? Oh, I'm going to tell you. This is I have I have no evidence of this. This is literally just me about to throw 
one of the greatest, if not my opinion, the greatest basketball player of all time under a huge bus. Jordan would be hated, would yes. be crushed, and would not have finished with the way he finished because of things like the 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 gambling, the Me Too stuff. Like, not that he ever has. I know he's cheated on his wife a lot. I'm guessing that Jordan probably got some stuff in his claw. I'm just assuming some of these things. Yeah. The the social justice warriors would have would have made him not want to play anymore or be a public figure anymore. Yeah. I believe that. LeBron's doing all of this under the closest watchful eye of anybody in the history of all this stuff. Um, and, and this is not a comparison between him and Jordan. I'm just saying the only knock on him is this, and that, he attitude. doesn't have the championships. He's got three. Jordan's got six. That's two more. That's double. Here's my problem. But he's been to nine, and Jordan only made six. It, like, Jordan only made six, so that means Jordan lost a lot more. These are the Joe Montana, Tom Brady yeah. conversations I have with people. That means Joe Montana lost four NFC Championship games that Tom won, but you're giving him credit for those. It's bull crap. Yeah, it's ridiculous. He, the other thing is, is not one single team on earth was anywhere close to the Warriors. Okay? What LeBron has ran into, this will be the fourth time that he's ran into the same team. Now, that the teams four, Jordan played against, four future Hall I'm going to compare on. those teams to the loss to the Spurs. Those are legit losses he's got to own. Yeah, Jordan played teams equal to that. But again, I he think, was playing against other Hall of Famers. Right. I think like, Jordan. Yeah, but there are Hall of Famers on that team as well. So like, you I'm, know, I'm Jordan, with you. But Jordan that's, played that's against Hall of Famers. I mean, it's, he played against Stockton and Malone. It's okay? not He's, like he was losing to bums. That's right. Like, he played guys too. You know, they lost to the Mavericks. That's something that'll be on his resume forever, and it should be. That super team should not have lost to the Mavericks. They play no. that series a hundred times. They should win it all hundred. Well, what, didn't they went up two to nothing in that, didn't they? Yep. Yeah. Like they were up two to nothing. And then no, lost I'm going to tell four. you, I firmly believe in sports karma and the gods of all things working out. That was the year of the decision of him going to Miami. This and another. And Dirk Nowinski has been the model. I'm going to be with one team my entire career. Yep. I think all sports gods lined up to say, we're rewarding this guy. We are not rewarding this guy. That That's the only – you give me a logical basketball explanation, and I just think you're ridiculous. I think, there is no logic for why you they lose that series. No, I, I think it's that they they got way too comfortable. They, I mean, they – because they you were also had a all first year, You had a first-year head coach in Spolster who's a really good coach, yep. coaching against a guy that I think is a top three, definitely a top five NBA coach right now coaching. Um, so, Rick I mean, Carlisle. Yeah, Rick Carlisle. He's a stud. So, so there, are, there are some mismatches there, but LeBron has a couple of losses he's got to own. Jordan or anyone else in the history of the NBA have never competed against a team like the Warriors. You're talking about – Two of the top five players on one team, a that's that's never happened. Even when Jordan well, went with Le- Le- Wade and Bosch, they didn't have two of the top five, and then four of yeah. the top fifteen or twenty. That's you, that's you your got entire four starting future, lineup. Yeah, you got four future Hall of Famers, and then toss in uh, Iguodala yeah. and whoever. Like you got real good veterans, and then and then when oh my god, now now we're transitioning to the other series, and then when the Warriors go down. Um, and, and they lose game four and game five to the Rockets, and everybody's crying. But they don't have any depth. They don't have any depth. Wait a minute now. We just crushed We just crushed Toronto because all they were is depth, and we said depth doesn't matter in the playoffs. Yep. It's all about stars. Now we have a team with nothing but stars. They lose, and they're just going to whine and complain about depth. This, this is all bull crap. Here's my problem with the Warriors, okay? Mental, good at basketball. I'm not arguing that. They've got okay. four great players and a great coach. Good at basketball. That might be the mentally softest team I've ever seen in my entire life. Draymond Green, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, all great at basketball. They could not be more thin-skinned little bitches. That's the word I'm going <laughs> to choose to use. I mean, you have a guy that's supposed to be the best player on that team, and we just forget about the fact that he created like a couple of dozen fake Twitter accounts to defend himself on Twitter. Yeah. Like, who does that? Uh, it's somebody thin-skinned. 
It, like it, somebody that has nothing good to do. Good at basketball. And that is only worried about what people think of him. But other than being good at basketball, I don't think those three individuals would be successful at anything else in life. Because What, what about me- Clay Thompson, though? I think Clay's probably think got Clay... a little t- toughness to him. I don't know. I would like to see what he would be like on a different team because it's real easy to be the, the fourth guy. He's without oh, it's, question I, the fourth guy. Well, it, well I think it, he's, he's fourth or third. I think Draymond no. could be the fourth. Dray- Draymond because is the blue of what guy. Dr- because of what Draymond does defensively, Draymond, Draymond's got to be the guy. I'm, I'm curious because everybody gives Jordan credit for all of those titles, I know. right? So, I know. so Pippen, like, would Jordan have been able to win what he did without having Scottie Pippen right there next to But you've got to you gotta replace Pippen with somebody. So if you replace him with a plumber, No. But if you replace him with an average guy, it's the demarcation of, well, that, that's of what, what are you replace him you put, with. If you put Jermichael Green from the Grizzlies into Draymond Green's spot and then move Draymond Green to Memphis, is think, Draymond as big I, a star I, I, as he has? I think Draymond Green, he might not be as big of a star, but Draymond Green is a top 20 player still. All right, now what about Jermichael Green? I think Jermichael Green has a chance to be an all-star. Because he's playing with four other all stars. That's what I'm All-Stars. saying. So like it so is Draymond Green as good as we're making him out yeah. to be? Yeah, I think I still think he's a top twenty player no matter where he plays. That's Andy jumps in on uh, Facebook. He said Clay will have his own team before too long. See, I don't know. And this is this is I what, don't think any of those guys want to leave. This is gonna make me question Clay's toughness, but even then, here's the problem. This is this is an enigma in the the only place that this can happen in which is Golden State which is Silicon Valley okay he is talking about taking a massive pay cut to be able to stay there if somebody was to offer him a max deal he would have to take over the course of the contract 60 million dollar pay cut and my first thought is is nobody's going to do that nobody in the world's going to do that you were talking about a centralized location of the country of the world where more billionaires live than anywhere else on the planet in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Somebody can find him equity in a company and a startup or something of that nature. Something you and I talk about a lot off podcast. We know that world a little bit that can make up that 60 million pretty quickly, pretty easily. He can't do that. Even in New York or LA, you don't have the connections he would have living in San Francisco, living in outside of, uh, of, of I know the stadium's in Oakland, but living outside of, of, of Silicon Valley, he, he doesn't get that opportunity. I am curious, uh, because they are bringing up, you know, the Warriors are going to be the biggest luxury tax spender ever yep. if this team stays constructed as it is. That's even with people taking pay cuts. Yep. Because it, you'll have the entire salary cap done with just these four guys. And that's bananas to, to even think about. But that is something that, that they're going to have to think about. Uh, let's discuss – all right, let's talk about Houston. Okay. Do you feel like they kind of puckered a little bit? Well, I think they ran out of gas. I mean, I absolutely think they like, ran out of gas. Without Chris Paul, that team obviously is, is not uh, as good. But, I mean, they won a lot of games without Chris Paul this year. He missed, what, like 31 games this year? But they didn't win games against Golden State. Yeah. And, I'm, they didn't, I'm and they didn't win games when they had to win games. They won a game. They won games in an 82 season marathon. Do you think that? It, all right. So now we're shifting gears again. Everybody, uh, Andy jumps in again on Facebook. He said, "How many All Stars will it eventually take to win a championship?" I think you're gonna have to have at least three. I think that's sad, but yeah, unless Adam Silver does something. To well, drastically unless, change the way basketball is played, unless LeBron James finds a way to pull it off in this, in I this do. Think, I honestly do believe that LeBron could win a championship with him and one other superstar. And but he's got to have about eight other role players that are all good yeah. that could all start. His bench guys have to be able to be starting caliber bench guys. Uh, KB jumps in. Harden's game doesn't translate to playoff basketball. Uh, Chris Vernon told me this years ago. When, when Harden was still in OKC, he said, you put this guy in an intense situation and he freezes up. Is that and a mental thing or a physical thing? I think it's a mental thing. Okay. I think it's all mental. Because he, he does play, like, what did he have, 30 points last night or something like that? Yeah, he but, got, but, but it, I mean, it he it had took, on like 60-something shots. Yeah, it took I mean, him forever I mean, to get to it. It's pretty ridiculous. So, But all of those players on Houston in a Game 7 at home – 
I mean, they missed 27 straight three-pointers. I watched it the night before with Boston. The oh, I difference know. is, is Boston doesn't have a James Harden playing. And that's that's the thing. The Harden, guys, the guys that, that were missing shots for Boston are guys we'd never heard of two months ago. I think Nobody knew who Rozier was. Now I, he's a big guy. I believe that Houston would probably have won that game with Chris Paul because they missed his leadership. If you're asking James Harden to be the leader on a team, that's not going to work. So, so let's talk about where LeBron James ends up after this whole thing is done. I'm sticking with what I stuck with beginning of the season. I think he stays in Cleveland. You really think he's going to stay in Cleveland? I think he stays in Cleveland. Where is the grass greener? I've told you before I would love to see him in Philadelphia. Not happening. He ain't going to Philly. But I don't think it's going to happen. No. Um, I think it'd be interesting to see him in Houston, but I don't think he wants to go to another Western Conference team and have to go up against the Warriors every year. So I think if, if he can stay on the East Coast or in the Eastern Conference and make NBA Finals and just hope that something happens, uh, Gary, Chris, and myself could win a championship with LeBron and Klay Thompson. No, yeah. I mean, uh, we, <laughs> I agree. Uh, we, well, yeah. those two, you're probably right. I do believe that LeBron and one other guy, he's the only guy that could win with just a, him and another star. Yeah. I think I think you're probably right. I mean, you, you need you this, a shooter. If I was LeBron, if he made a long term deal, a long term deal in Cleveland to be there, and they lock him up, I think they have the goods to go get Kawhi. And I think LeBron and Kawhi would wreck the East. I think Boston's going to be scary. I don't think Boston can beat LeBron and Kawhi. And no, and then you, I think LeBron yeah. and Kawhi and whatever other plumbers or misfits you can put on that team. They give the Warriors all they want. Yeah. Now that's, I just that's believe, if, I believe that. I that, believe that's it. That's if he because, leaves San Antonio. Because that's a guy that that plays tough. That's a guy that plays defense just as well as he plays offense. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, we're going to move off of that. Let's uh, let's go on and get an add in for uh, for my booking. Then we're going to jump into some college football and, and gambling and whatnot. You wanted the best online sports book? That's easy. It's mybookie.ag. They've got the easiest website layout, the best odds, amazing customer service, and payouts in only two business days. Check out mybookie.ag for yourself, and then when you sign up, use promo code WCE50 for 50% deposit bonus. That's mybookie.ag, promo code WCE50. All right, let's jump into the South Point College Football Games of the Year. The lines were released. Uh, This goes all the way through the season. It's the biggest college football games of the year. They went ahead and put lines on them. It kind of gives you an idea of what uh, what betters and what Vegas thinks of college football teams. So I always love this time of year. They did it on Thursday. They had a line just wrapped around the building for people wanting to put in their bets as soon as the lines went up. Uh, it happened at 10 a.m. Pacific time. I was ready to go. Uh, I've been working on a, a story for the website I'll probably put up tomorrow at some point. I'm talking about the uh, the surprise lines. Let's go ahead and jump into this. The week one lines have been out for a little while. I want to do week by week on this, and we'll just do it super fast, all right? And, okay. and we'll talk about the ones that really surprise you, which ones stick out. I don't think you've looked at all these, have you? I haven't looked at any of them. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump in on Saturday, September the 8th. That is week number two. They have Georgia, an 11-point favorite at South Carolina. They got USC at Stanford. Stanford, a two-point favorite. Uh, Iowa State at Iowa. They've got Iowa a touchdown favorite. Penn State a 14-point favorite at Pittsburgh. The one that stuck out to me, Georgia minus 11 at South Carolina. Does that surprise you a little bit? I, I have no idea. I mean, all this is is better's perception, so no. I mean, every, to put a line out this early, you're just trying to think of where's the most money going to go. Let's make that number skewed to that way. And, and everybody just watched Georgia barely lose a, a national championship game, have an unbelievable recruiting class. We're working on the assumption we're just going to hand them the East again. So, I mean, this is going to be their toughest opponent of the East. And it's in week two. Yeah. So. And that's that's surprising to me uh, that it was 11 points at South Carolina. This will be Jake Fromm's second big-time road game, like real true road game. And he lost the other one 41-17 to at Auburn. But people forget that because they watched him beat Auburn, and then they watched him almost beat Alabama. Exactly. And so going on the road to South Carolina, week two, that I, if that line sticks right there, I mean, I, I'll go and admit I've already got 
Uh, I've already got money on South Carolina plus 11. That's smart. I would because too. 100%. I um, uh, I think South Carolina's going to be really good. They're they're getting players back. I was on them last year, and yeah. I think the only reason they stumbled was because they got hurt. They got they got hit by the injury. Yeah, bug. they got the injury. Bug. I think they got a chance to win the East this year. I I wouldn't don't, doubt it. You don't want to piss Will Muschamp off, man. And if there's a school that he don't like, it's Georgia. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right about that. Um, it, none of none of the other games that week really stand out. Well, you don't know anything about them. We have no idea what USC is going to look like. They're going to have a new starting core. Most of these games, you've got to see who the new coach is or who the new quarterback is. Yeah. And if they well, change and we don't know what of, Stanford's quarterback yeah, is going to look they like. They really. one of those teams. You have no idea what this team's going to be. Exactly. Uh, and right now, we're just talking about numbers and, and perception. Like, whether or not the perception jumps us. Uh, <laughs> KB... Uh, Listen, old ball coach ain't walking through that door. I wish the old ball coach would have came to Memphis it's, for that uh, that AF NFL the, league, whatever yeah, it's called, that, AFF. That, I'd, I'd rather have them or him than uh, we hadn't even talked about that. Well, Listen, we'll I'm not going to knock week. on Singletary hire, but there are very few people in this world that I love more than the old ball coach. No, you're right about that. Spurrier was a hero. Uh, KB also jumped in. No, Andy said uh, South Carolina's going to snake bit somebody. It, it might be Georgia. I hope I, it's Georgia. I agree. I, I hope agree. they do more than snake beat them. I hope they, hope they win the East. It'd be nice. It'd, it'd be a lot of fun to watch that. See Will Muschamp hold up an SEC East trophy. My gosh, he hadn't done that yet. Uh, Houston at Texas Tech. Texas Tech's a seven-point favorite. Boise State at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State minus six on that. LSU at Auburn. Auburn is a 12-point favorite. Uh, Alabama is a 20-point favorite at Ole Miss. USC a one-point favorite at Texas. Central Florida is an 11-point favorite at North Carolina. And then Ohio State is a 12-point favorite at TCU. That game is being played in Jerry World, but it is a TCU home game. Anything stand out there? Take all the big number dogs today. All the big, So Ole Miss plus 20. Yeah. Take, uh, take North Carolina plus 11. Yeah. At home. Yeah. Take Taking, all the dogs. Uh, taking LSU plus 12 at Auburn. No, I don't know about that. If you're a home dog, we're having a different conversation. Mm, I'd like probably T- do it. TCU probably, plus 12 at I'd home against do Ohio that. State. I don't think LSU is going to win many games, but I also don't think they'll get blown out a lot either. I mean, we're going to have talent. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, Boise State uh, plus six at uh, at Oklahoma State. You think that's – Boise, I have no idea. Who knows about Boise State, right? They they returned that uh, that quarterback, though. I don't I – don't, we, and we don't even know his name. Houston. That's how good he was. Houston plus seven at Texas Tech is a little. I, I'll be interested to see what Houston does with Kendall Bryles as their offensive coordinator now, uh, because they stole him from from Lane Kiffin, and you know Houston was all right last year. They got talent. They still got Ed Oliver on defense. They uh, they got players. They're like the poor man's LSU. <laughs> they got a, they got Major Applewhite as a head coach. And then they got – they're going to just try to have really good coordinators. Well, they, they got uh, – I mean, with Kendall Bryles. I believe in Kendall Bryles. His ability to run an offense is – At some point in time, the head coach has to make a decision. I don't trust Major Applewhite to do anything. I don't think I do either. Uh, Saturday, September 22nd, Stanford plus three at Oregon. Wisconsin minus five at Iowa. TCU in Texas is a pick em. Arkansas plus 23 at Auburn. Texas A&M plus 21 at Alabama. I'll take Arkansas plus 23 against anybody on the planet. With Chad Morris? Yeah. You you expect uh, – No, I expect teams that know how to score to never get blown out. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, now really bad offensive teams like LSU, you can get blown out because you, your defense can get tired, stay on the field long. If you're a really good offensive mind, you're going to score – 20, 30 a game. So to blow those guys out is impossible. What about – That's crazy. What about Texas A&M plus 21 at Alabama? I'd, I'd take Jimbo's all the big first dogs. Year. I'd take all the big dogs. All right, now, how about this little dog? Iowa, every year, sneaks up on somebody at home. Wisconsin has to go to Iowa. I don't know anything about either of these teams. I'm not making it. Well, Wisconsin returns these basically – today at all. Basically everybody from not, last college year. College football won't be here for three months. This game won't be played for four months. I I don't I don't know. 
Anything that's within a touchdown of one another, I have no idea what the hell I'm looking at. <laughs> and nobody else does either, by the way. Just an FYI. There's a chance that, I, you know, Wisconsin could be undefeated going into this game. Iowa could have two losses, and you can get a better number than that when the game happens. Now, you're probably right. I mean, that, w- would it shock you to see Iowa lose at home to Iowa State? No. No, not at all. So, uh, that'd be if you're going to bet a game that that close, that's ridiculous. Especially right this, now. This early, yeah. Um. Ole Miss plus 13 at LSU. That's right, Andy. Uh, t- what do you say? Can't, Can't get here quick Yeah, enough. you got that right. We're 90-something days away from the start of SEC football, so let's uh, let's do this thing. Right, what was that line? Ole Miss plus 13 at LSU on Saturday, September 29th. Uh, West Virginia plus 3 at Texas Tech. Stanford plus 8 at Notre Dame. And then Ohio State minus 1.5 at Penn State. I would bet a house note on Ole Miss right now. On Ole Miss plus 13 and – at LSU? I think there's a chance LSU might not win an SEC game. I, I hope that Good God I'm wrong. Gracious. I've said that five times on this podcast since we've been I'm, doing I'm this. still just surprised that you, you – I hope I'm wrong. You think I they fire to, Orgeron I after tried the, to – well, if how we many, don't win an SEC game – Well, of course. No, no, no. I'm saying how many games – like, it, would he have to have a losing season to lose his job? There are – he has come out and said he thinks if he don't win nine games, he's going to lose his job. I mean, he's openly said that with Tim Brando. Good gracious. He believes that if he don't win nine games, he'll, he knows what the expectation is. I, when well, I think you Les hear, Miles was there for, what, 10 years? He was there for 11 yeah, years. 11 years. 11 years, he had one season where he only won eight games. And then everything else was nine or ten, and I think it was only two seasons of nine wins. Yeah, no, I was going to say the two seasons of nine wins uh, were the two "quote unquote" down seasons. Yeah, and he had one that he went eight and five, and then everything, everything else, else was, was ten wins or more. Ten or more. And now he couldn't be. He couldn't. It's a saving effect. He couldn't beat Nick. Yep. He beat him twice. That was it. And so well, then on top of that, he loses to Auburn. He loses to Wisconsin. And then he's out. Um, that's something we're going to talk about next week, by the way. Les Miles, the actor. You heard about this? Yeah, I want to. I want to see more about it before. Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm planning on doing. I want to see what's going to happen and uh, and us figure out a little more information on that before we discuss it. Friday, October fifth, Utah State plus three at BYU. I can't believe BYU was favored over anybody after what they did last year. It's Utah State. Why is that a big game? Why is there a line for that today? I would imagine because they're out in Las Vegas and there might be some Utah State and BYU grads. I, I don't know. I don't know. South Point put these lines out. Man, it ain't me. I wouldn't put it up there. But that's just me. Well, we're talking about it. You can skip it. Flor- anything, anything you foresee that, that <laughs> is unnecessary, you can skip it. You're holding the vapor. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Florida State plus eight at Miami. That was a little surprising to me. It seemed like a big, uh, big number. No, we, they have no idea what Willie Tiger is going to do in Florida State. Nebraska plus seventeen at Wisconsin. Good old Scott Frost uh, bringing the big red back. LSU minus three and a half at Florida. Washington plus sixteen. Oh, sorry, minus sixteen. Hang on, stop. LSU is favored at Florida. I mean, I, I, I don't know that favored. Dan Mullins is going to be great, but damn. Yeah. I, oh, it, that was a – I've got it marked as one of my mild surprises. LSU minus three and a half at Florida. Washington minus 16 at UCLA. Chip Kelly's uh, new stomping grounds. Texas plus 12 against Oklahoma in Dallas. And then Navy minus five against Air Force. We don't care about that one. Um, I don't know what the over-under is. Andy's asking about what the over-under is for Mississippi State games right now. I haven't looked. And th- um, those numbers might it not is, even be up yet. No, no, no. Those those are up uh, at Vegas. Uh, State was uh, eight. State was over eight and a half. Yeah. I, I would have – if I had so to pick it was, the line, it was eight and a half. I would have picked eight. I probably would go over eight and a half. Like, I, I don't know much about Joe Moorhead. I don't know what he's going to be able to do with these kids down here. But uh, a lot of people really believe in him, and, and they have got State ranked – Way on up there. And their schedule breaks really nice this year. Really, really nice. Like, they, they've got a stretch of some tough stuff, but but it's nice. Um, Nebraska, you do you expect anything out of Scott Frost, do you think? Not this year? Year one, no. I mean, they don't have any talent. Uh, UCLA plus 16 at home against Washington. That'll be the first major game for uh, for Chip Kelly. 
I don't know what's left there, man. I don't know what they have. I mean, I have no. I mean, they could after be, Josh Rosen. They just could be. Whatever. They could be loaded, and we just don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. I have. I have a different question. Totally different topic, but you brought up Chip Kelly and UCLA. They're about the only school this really affects. So the state of Mississippi has a rule, has a law that state schools in the state of Mississippi cannot have contracts longer than four years. Longer than four years. So you can pay a coach as much money as you want, but they'll never have more than a four year deal. Right. And you can have it written in the contract that if you have or if you and reach a winning, certain number yeah, of wins, that's right. you, you, you can automatically get re you know, real. You can do things like that, but if they choose to fire you, they can that supersedes the well, you didn't make that number. I fired you before you got to that number and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Um the state of California is considering putting a max limit of two hundred thousand dollars for salaried employees that work for universities, which would affect coaches. And now it would affect schools like UCLA, but but Stanford and USC are private. Are private. No, that's what I'm saying. UCLA. I mean, I guess that, Cal so, football would matter. Cal's basketball coach probably makes more than that. I don't know if Fresno. I'm guessing Fresno State's. Uh, but there, you're talking about smaller tier. The big boy in this is UCLA, basketball and football. Yeah. What does Chip do? Uh, maybe he should have taken that Florida job. Well, no, huh. they're, they're going to. Because you know Florida's never going to make a decision like that. They're going to find a way to, like you were talking about before with Clay Thompson. Boosters. Somebody else paying. Boosters will be paying. Like, here's this will my, not be university. Thing. Like, Nick Saban's money from the I University get, of Alabama yeah, is get, only like $5 million. He gets another six or whatever. From I do boosters. have a problem with since so much money comes into these sports, why do they call the coaches like still state employees? Like I have a problem with that. And, and then my, because my it's biggest, a it's a state institution, like my, it's it's yes, government funded. That's, that's right. But 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 the athletic salary, program is not. His salary is not government funded. Okay. Right. And and here's my bigger problem with that. And this is the political side of this. If you retire. From one of these schools, making five million dollars a year, does the school, does the state now have to pay your retirement pension on that salary? There, there's no way. I don't know that there's not because I remember when Franchoni left Alabama for Texas because, and 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 I had a a, a brother, a half brother of mine, a lot older than me, um, told me the reason he did it was the retirement laws in the state of Texas are way better. His retirement would be like double what it would be had he stayed at Alabama. He was still Alabama. 20 years from retiring if he, no, if he was successful. Guy, the older guy. Whoever the – I don't know. It might, it might not have been Franchoni. Who's the guy that left a, uh, Alabama for a and That was Franchoni. Okay, so it was right. He didn't coach for 20 years after that. No, he didn't. But if he had been successful, he would have. He was only like 50 years old But when you he don't know that. No, he could have he could have coached there for five years and said, I'm going to retire. Well, no, he'd have to. It, you'd you'd retire at sixty five, like yeah. technically that that's when all that stuff would kick in. Uh, so Andy said you would uh, you would think the pension is based on school contract, excluding booster money. Yeah, I would agree. But if Saban has five million dollars of his pension, does the state have to come up with eighty percent of that the rest of his life? God, I have that's, no idea. That's my that's question. A great question. I don't know the answer to that. If that's the case, I'm not paying them anything, and I'm making the boosters pay all of it. Oh yeah. Because the taxpayers should not have to pay for your, your but, football. But for these athletic programs that are bringing in 190-something million dollars. It's not going to bring it in for a decade after he retires. Are no, we think he's going to die the next day? Well, no, but it, it's, never brought in, it's never brought in less than 120. Doesn't, doesn't matter. It, it, but that money needs to pay for the school and all the other bull crap that costs money in the school. Not yeah. some retired coach's salary. Uh, that K- money needs to pay for the ten coaches you hire after him, as you fire them after one year. Agreed. Because they're That's, not Nick. I'm I'm curious. Uh, I've got some uh, some assistant AD buddies that I'll I'll ask. I don't about know the that. answer. I might. Okay, it may be different for every one. state. But I but I know this in the state of Mississippi, you put in the time, you get five years, whatever that top salary, whatever your last salary was, an average of five years. That is, and crazy. he's been there for over five. Um, KB jumps in. Uh, oh yeah, Andy said if uh, if that's the case, A and M just screwed themselves. Yeah, big time. Yeah, big time on that because my God. Well, A and M didn't. The state of Texas did. 
Yeah. All those Longhorn it, fans are now going to be paying the bill for that juggle the rest of his life. <laughs> well, but he has to last five. That's the problem. If they fire him, he didn't last five years, then they don't have to pay him up. Yeah. KB jumped in. He said, I had to step away for a minute. Doesn't Michigan play Notre Dame week one? What's the line? Um, KB, we were not talking about week one lines. We're just going through the games of the year by South Point. South um, Point didn't have that game up. They, well, no, no, no. They, they do have the game. Like, week one lines came out a month ago. Oh. Uh, and we probably didn't get a chance to talk about them on here. But uh, but Notre Dame was favored by seven at home against Michigan in week one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, $75 million guaranteed. That's the most ridiculous contract in the history of the world. Newly single man around town. God, yep. Tuesday, man. October 9th, Appalachian State and Arkansas State is a pick em. Who cares? Why, why, Friday, is, why is that on there? That's I hadn't figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is the the last three winners of the uh, Sun no Belt. No one cares. <laughs> no one. No one. People in the Sun Belt don't. People who get yeah. Arkansas State like students right now and graduates don't care. Yeah, but big time betters. No, if they, they if no, they, they feel don't. like they got Arkansas no, they State they right now, they don't give a shit. Uh, Arizona plus five at Utah. That's Kevin Sumlin big road game. Wait, wait, how, how do you feel about Kevin Sumlin with Khalil Tate? I'm interested to see. He'll be I, good. I think he's going to be real good. It's Johnny think, Manziel 2.0. He's really good. Oh, yeah. He's he's going to be fine. I think he's better than Johnny. Whoo! Whoa, 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 whoa. He might not have the college career Johnny had, but. He's probably a better kid. He's bigger <laughs> He's bigger than him. Yeah. He's faster than him. He doesn't have the arm. He, oh, I don't know about that. Not yet. He oh, might. I don't know about that. He might develop it. Johnny had a good arm, but he wasn't deadly accurate. Well, no, he wasn't. He threw to Mike Evans, who went up 10 feet and get the ball. How hard is that? Saturday, October 13th, Nebraska plus six at Northwestern. Uh, Wisconsin plus three at Michigan. Wisconsin's schedule does not break easily for them this year. Uh, they got to play at Iowa, at Michigan. Uh, who else do they play? Ohio State or somebody? We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, Wisconsin plus three at Michigan. Boise State minus 16 against Nevada. Washington minus 10 at Oregon. Mario Cristobal, the new head man at Oregon. Ohio plus three at Northern Illinois and Central Florida minus five at Memphis. Anything stand out there? No, I don't. I, half of those games, I, I don't even know what it, they, they don't matter. So I lose track of any of the good games that actually might matter. Saturday, October 20th, Oregon minus one at Washington State. Michigan plus one at Michigan State. NC State plus 20 at Clemson. Florida Atlantic minus eight at Marshall. The only reason that line is up there is because of Lane Kiffin. Think anything uh, crazy there? Clemson minus 20 at home against NC State? Mm. I mean, I'd probably take the dog just because. That's just because that's points. a lot of points. I mean, if Clemson, we get to that late in the season, Clemson's quarterback goes down, or their best defensive player, you know, blows an ACL. All right, I'll take a 20-point lead. Oregon minus one at Washington State is a little weird. They they think very highly of Oregon this year. They've got them favored over Stanford. They got them favored over uh, here at at Washington State. Uh, I don't know that they think that. I think Oregon has a huge fan base and they have a lot of betters that bet their way. I think that's all this is. You're probably right. I don't think this is. Are you Vegas surprised at all about any of this? Stuff. Michigan plus one at Michigan State. No, because Michigan hasn't come up big in any big game so far. Like none of the rivalry games, no. anyway. So, so that's exactly the number. If you made me pick a pick a line for a game that's going to happen six months from now, yeah, all right, pick them. <laughs> like, wouldn't wouldn't we you just going to make them all pick? But wouldn't you make that game a pick them based on the information that you have right now? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean I, this what, line came out after Shea Patterson was ruled eligible. What would you? I mean, what else would you make it? You're not going to make one of them a heavy favor or the other. No. I mean, if something happened and and I was just Antonio, surprised, like retired. I was just surprised out, that Michigan State problem. was the favorite because the talent is but is obviously on one, Michigan side. One point. I I mean I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, Clemson minus ten at Florida State. This is Saturday, October 27th, Halloween weekend. Florida plus 15 against Georgia in Jacksonville. Kansas State plus 19 at Oklahoma. Um, and that's all for that weekend. Not not a whole lot going on the last weekend in October. Uh, that is the weekend before Alabama LSU. Uh, let's see. This year's do or die for Harbaugh has to beat State or Ohio State. KB might be right here. I, they're, 
they're not going to fire him. He could lose all the rivalry games, and it wouldn't matter. Like, he, he is so tied in with a the contract there. Like, they, they – I'm not going to say can't fire him. But he's not going to lose all those games. But I, He's just not. He's too good of a coach. If he goes 10-2 and two but loses those two last, games, like, last they're year, still going to love him. He, he came crazy close to beating Ohio State, and he had 30% of his team injured and hurt. Like, it's just – this is what it is. You can't control it. You can't do anything about it. But Andy jumped in, by the way. He said, Shea Patterson at Michigan. What do y'all think about that? I think he's going to be good. I think he'll be I, the best quarterback Harbaugh's had since Andrew Luck. And, and now the other side of this is, it, honestly, like I think he would have been second string to Tamu. I mean, most Ole, at Miss, Ole Miss. Ole Miss people are all going to say that. We would never know until we like, No, we, we wouldn't there. know, I mean, but – if Tamu, Tamu's numbers were if Tamu fantastic, com, that's fine. Tamu comes out and you know throws five picks or whatever in a game. Tamu's sitting down. Yeah, I mean that's just what's going to happen. So it just depends on who shows up and who doesn't and what happens. I mean, I'm I'm curious to see if if Patterson fits into like a pro style offense because it, I mean they got Pep Hamilton and they got uh, 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 Shark Boy with uh, Jim McElwain. <laughs> Sorry. And then you got Jim Harbaugh, and it's all pro style guys. And Shea Patterson was built for like the Hugh Freeze offense. He wasn't built for that. That's just what he's ran. No, that's what he ran like in high school. He was. I. I he's a I, dual threat that's, guy. That's what he's ran, but that's not how. Like, like he wasn't designed in a lab for this. He's a smart kid. He knows how to throw the football. He's got all off season to learn the plays, to learn the playbook, and to practice with the guys. Andy Let's says, how much, how much protection does he need for Shea? Uh, Tamu is a, uh, a tougher quarterback than Shea. Um, and then KB says, I'll be at the OSU game. We'll give Facebook Live exclusive to Winning Cures Everything. Have the dump button ready. I'm going to be drunk. We we might do that. That that could be a good time. That could be a real good time if we just bring him in like live on camera. It'd be, I'd, I'd be all right with that. I'd be cool with that. Uh, let's talk about Saturday, November 3rd. Louisville plus 20 and a half at Clemson. There's no way to know what Louisville is. We have no clue. We don't know who the backup quarterback was. Placing the best quarterback that Louisville has ever had. Uh, Notre Dame minus seven at Northwestern. Stanford plus 13 at Washington. Penn State plus three and a half at Michigan. Kansas State plus 12 at TCU. Alabama minus 10 at LSU. And then Air Force plus eight at Army. Clemson line looks a little bit big for not knowing what in the world we're getting into. Notre Dame is favored, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they are favored in every game. Well, yeah, because this is all about better perception. Yeah. I'm going to bet Alabama's favored in every game. Oh, yeah, Alabama's a double-digit favorite in every game except for the Auburn game. So, it's just all about better perception. There are more Catholics out there gambling than anybody else. They're always going to be favored regardless, of, especially this far out. Stanford is an underdog in four games already right now. Would it be smart to put money on on Stanford in every one of those games? I don't know. I wouldn't do it because I don't think David Shaw is that great of a coach. Really? Yeah. Have we had this discussion before? I'm sure I've said that I don't think past. we've had this discussion before. <laughs> I thought sure you I, loved David Shaw. I like David Shaw. I think he's probably a good dude. But I don't, I don't know that he's a great. I think the difference between him and Harbaugh is is a lot, like, like, unmeasurable a lot. Really? Yeah. That blows that, my mind. That, that team has progressively gotten worse every year that he's been there. I, I mean, I guess they've progressively gotten. Their offense. Uh huh. LSU made their offense look. Like bad, yeah. LSU's offense looked great compared to theirs, and we got nobody. David Shaw, I just, I'm not impressed. I'm just not. I, that, I don't know why that surprises me so. Much. I don't. <laughs> Here's the thing: I like, like I just, Stanford in the sense that they run the football and they play good defense, and that's the style of football that I like because when I it's tough to get recruits yeah. there, because and, and like I think, and I most think guys can't get like in, like mentally and, tough, physically tough team because of the style of football that they play. I just don't find him creative. I don't find him motivational. I just, I just don't. Okay. I think someone's a better coach than him. I, I think. 
out of the how many twelve teams in the Pac twelve now, I I uh, think they got fourteen. I think he's probably somewhere between. Oh no, they got they only got twelve. Yeah, they got they're twelve. Pac twelve. They changed their name from Pac ten to Pac twelve. Um, they I would probably put him right in the middle at five or sixth in in like coaching. Maybe no, not even five. Like, yeah, sixth or seventh in ranking of coaching. Just thinking off the top of my head. That's not great. No. That, that didn't bode well for him. No, it really doesn't. So. That is uh, surprising. Yeah, it's 12 members in the Pac-12. Why did I think that they had 14? I don't know. The Big Ten. Has 14. The ACC and the SEC all have 14. Correct. And then well, the. Well, did the Big Ten get to 14? I know they got 12. No, they, they got to 14. They added Rutgers in Maryland. Oh, that's when they added Rutgers yeah. in Maryland. That's right. Yep. So, they, they were already at 12 when they were the Big Ten. So Burrow coming just, to the Bayou. Uh, talking about uh, Joe Burrow, Ohio State transfer. You know anything about him? No, I don't know anything about him. I I, I've heard really, I don't really follow good things. College football. Look, I want LSU to be good, and 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 I've watched all of the videos, all of the interviews. I've listened to them all on Orgeron. I find him. I I understand when you listen to him, how he could be a good recruiter. Like, before I ever listened to him, I was like, why the hell would anybody play for him, work for him? He's an incredibly likable person. I, yeah. I, think that's, I think that's true. I think he's a decade older than when he was at Ole Miss. Like, <laughs> I like, agree with Like, yeah. I, I, I listened to um, – and you can – this is this is one of the best ones I'd, I'd heard so far. Uh, download – oh, God. What is the name? Barstool's podcast, their biggest one. Pardon my uh, take. Pardon my take. Pardon my takes. Uh, interview with him was just unbelievable. They did an and interview like, with yeah. With they went down there, and uh, and, and for Grit Week, and he is not just real likable, but you can tell he's grown up. Okay, he's a completely different person. Like they tried to jive him into like doing some of the old school stuff, and he's like, I'm no, like I'm not that guy anymore. I'm not. I'm not in my thirties and, and for the first time ever got real fame. Like he didn't know how to handle it and he didn't know what to do about it. Um, <laughs> Andy said, did they have a translator? <laughs> I don't think you oh, had man. to now. No, like it back man. in the day, I mean, he's, you can kind of understand you gotta Listen, but that's his dialect. Now I, I will tell you this when he was at Ole Miss and I'm a huge LSU fan and I was hating on Ole Miss. I never once made fun of his speech. Because that's how he was raised. I know that I talk funny, and and my wife's family's from Cleveland. I, I definitely sound country as hell when I go up there. Like I don't. I'm not going to judge somebody for that. Yeah. I, I'm going to judge you based on what your record is, and and then and then how you present yourself. When he presented himself at Ole Miss, it's how he presented himself as the butt of the joke. The wild boys. That was the butt of the joke. Always taking his shirt off. Like they they tried to get him take his shirt off like ten times. He's like no. <laughs> like I'll never do it again. Like I'll never like wrestle another. Like that's I'm hey, off, I'm off topic something on that. years old. You're talking about bar stool and pardon my take. Yeah. It's so. Uh, did you read all of the uh, PFT commenter stories that came out? Like in the last week and a half, two weeks. No. Okay, so Washington Post did a big piece on him. Deadspin did another piece on him because Deadspin and Barstool have a, a war other. going yeah. on. Uh, and then there was like another one that that they were talking about him. Um, but they they put in that thing that each episode of Pardon My Take generates fifty grand in advertising. That doesn't surprise me. That's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a week. Um, we've had this conversation before. I know. Adam, I know. Adam we, Carolla talks about it. Adam Carolla probably makes a hundred twenty thousand dollars a show when he does two which shows. Is he does two shows a day, five days a week. That's just bonkers money, man. Crazy money. You got to you got to get to exponential numbers. I mean, those guys are which, pulling numbers. Which means all you guys that are watching and listening to the podcast and whatnot need to be sharing this thing out. Help me get paid, please. Let's go. Let's see. I could be doing this every day. But listen, Chris and I could if, be in here you, every day if we were making fifty thousand dollars a day. If you were listening <laughs> to if you were listening to the Barstool interview, and then a lot of other. I mean, I know he sat down with Tim Brando. He's done a lot of these things. I want good things for him. I don't. I wonder if LSU at some was point set in time, up. I got to stop thinking about what I want. I got to be honest with what expectations are because if I'm expecting nine, ten wins, 
I feel like I'm going to not handle this football season I, I think well. that they should have – I don't know that LSU was set up for success immediately under Orgeron. Like, there was a reason why Les Miles was was coming down, right? Like, no, things were not set up. No, no, no. We're going to disagree with that. They're two totally different people. No, I'm Les with you. Miles, I'm saying Les that, Miles didn't have – all right, I'm not – LSU has talent. Okay. I, I'm not saying that Orgeron and, and Miles are similar. I'm saying that what Les Miles left in the cupboard, I don't know, was enough for what Orgeron— They still put a gazillion players in the NFL. Those last two drafts that, that Ed Orgeron was over, last year's draft and the year before his draft where he took over halfway through, put a ton of players in the NFL. I don't think that the team was built the way that Orgeron would build the team. You're, that's a completely different conversation. That's but what that's, I'm saying. That's a, but they, you said, they you hired said the cover Orgeron. wasn't bare. Like they didn't have players. That's the no, word. I, the words out of your mouth were they didn't have players. We had more players than anybody else going to the NFL draft last year. More the, than everybody. Your well, precious Alabama didn't put as many players as LSU did last year in the NFL. I know you only like to count round one. Like this like this past? No, like, did, last year. Oh, last year. Yeah, no, no, no. Alabama had what, like seven? Anyway. Whatever I'm, it was. No, I'm, just, I'm with you. I'm, I'm just with telling you. you, the cover wasn't bare. No, and I – okay, then I misspoke. Uh, and Andy jumps in. Don't think LSU is going to make the 10-win spot. Not close. Uh, Orgeron is one of the best recruiters in the SEC, hands down. Not, that's not, not – Not close to 10. Yeah, and and that's that's the thing. That's so what I'm I, saying. I have a new key like, to life. This will help you. you last give year you was father, Orgeron's rule. You want me to leave you a little fatherly advice? Go from ahead. a guy that doesn't know very much. <laughs> but I figured this out. The happiness – is expectations minus reality, okay? So if you take reality, you take your expectations, you subtract what reality actually is, and maybe that's burst. You take reality subtracted by expectations equals happiness, all right? If I'm expecting four wins this year and we win seven, I'm the happiest guy alive. We okay, could, that makes sense. We could lose all four of our non-conference games to Rice and Louisiana Monroe. We still got seven W's. I was expecting four. We beat some people we shouldn't have beat. That's great. I'm happy. Not a bad year. Expectation. Life is reality minus expectation. I like it. Remember that. Think about that when you're expecting Alabama to go undefeated and win another national oh, championship. Oh, I'm, I'm not so worried about that. I, I don't. I, how did this get into an Alabama discussion? It didn't. I'm just telling you that's your expectation, and you'll be happier if your expectations change. My expectations are – to enjoy watching football. That's, that's a, about it. That's a bullshit lie. That's a, <laughs> that's a lie. He's, he's lying to you people. I'm not lying One thing I all. have never done is come on this show and lie. I will, I will tell you this. After, I might have said something that was wrong. After putting – After dealing with the mid-2000s, or just the 2000s period, mid-90s through the 2000s. You win for a decade. You don't get to hang on to the three years that you were really bad before the winning started back. No, it was 10 years. And you, and you get everybody to feel sorry for you. It was 10 years you of bad. You bullied college football for a decade. Nobody cares. But it Nobody sounds like cares. you are irritated at me. No, no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not irritated with you. Here's I'm the deal. I'm just telling you. I am perfectly fine if we don't win a national championship. I'm perfectly fine if we I don't win an SEC championship. I've watched you sit on the couch and lose and just be like, "You were mad that, was that no I didn't." Deal. You you were mad that I wasn't like completely upset about it. You weren't upset at all. You literally just that's watched why you a were preseason mad. football game. That's why you were upset I at think me. That's pathetic. That's <laughs> because I just like watching football, and yes, I enjoy it when my team wins, but it's not the end of the world if they lose, and that's all right. Okay. And he said, at least he's wearing a St. Louis lid. Of course he is. That's no, no. Believe it, they're Cardinals, not, they're baby. Not, they're not very good either. Believe it, Cardinals, baby. Let's go. All right, all right. Let's jump in the last little bit of this. Saturday, November the 10th. We're still doing this. Jesus yeah, man, Christ. yeah, we're still doing this. We were trying to get through the whole thing. This will just be the end of the show. We'll talk about sports gambling and whatnot in, uh, in next week's show or the end of this week's show or whenever we decide to do this again because we're going to try and get back on at least a somewhat decent schedule. Auburn plus three at Georgia, Kentucky minus one at Tennessee, Ole Miss plus seven at Texas A&M, Northwestern plus seven at Iowa, Ohio State minus six at Michigan State, Oklahoma State plus 11 at Oklahoma, Wisconsin plus four and a half at Penn State. That's the other road game Wisconsin got. And Florida State plus nine at Notre Dame. Anything interesting 
whatsoever. No, Oklahoma State plus 11 doesn't surprise you. These games are almost a year away. Yeah. Six months away. That's more than six months. It's, no, it's November 10th. 11-10. Right now it's 529. That's it's, a long time. It is a long time. Uh, Nothing's interesting. Do you think that, that Oklahoma there. is going to be, like, lights out better than everybody else in the Big 12? No. That's because that's what all of this stuff is is setting up as. A- at least that's what they have the perception being. That's because they have the biggest fan base in the Big Twelve, more so than Texas. Yeah. Yep. Really. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I, I. I don't know if I can roll with that. I would wonder. Okay. I would. There. There's got to be some way that we can look up how much money was bet on Texas this year as opposed to how much money was bet on Oklahoma this past year. And I bet it's almost double. This is you only be... gambling. This is only okay. better perspective. Okay. You're, you're only – okay. We're not talking about just fan bases. We're talking about betting fan bases. It's like you got to beat things into your head. Well, no, it's We're Oklahoma. talking about gambling perspective. Florida Texas Atlanta. is a big school. It doesn't matter. They haven't been great for a couple of years, so nobody cares. So a lot of people are not going to be betting on them. Nobody, people, people didn't even playing. show up to games last year. They didn't sell out every game last year. Yeah, that is pretty crazy, isn't it? So, I mean, it's well, just I mean, one of those things. Well, I mean, can you blame them? God, they got beat by three touchdowns by Maryland at home in the first game of the year. I, I mean, it'd be tough to go to a game after that, too. That answers my question. What was the question? Is Oklahoma has a bigger fan base right now than Texas? I think Texas still has a bigger fan base, but Oklahoma's got a bigger betting It doesn't fan count base. if they don't show up. Nah, you're probably right on that. You're probably right. Yeah, a lot of people are still in the uh, the Lincoln Riley, like, thing right now. We'll see how that all goes. Uh, November seventeenth, USC minus six at UCLA. Florida Atlantic is only a seven point favorite at North Texas. Uh, Arizona State plus nine at Oregon. Miami minus three at Virginia Tech. I might toss on Virginia Tech there. San Diego State. Uh, blah blah blah. All right, now we're moving into Thanksgiving. You ready? Okay. Thanksgiving night, Mississippi State, minus seven at Ole Miss. Okay. Oklahoma, minus 10 at West Virginia. This is on Friday, November 23rd. Washington, minus 13 at Washington State. Nebraska, plus eight at Iowa. Central Florida, minus six and a half at South Florida. And Houston, plus eight at Memphis. Then we move into Saturday. This is the big rivalry weekend, all that good stuff. Auburn plus seven at Alabama. That's the uh, lowest line of the year for Bama. Michigan plus nine at Ohio State. I might jump on Michigan there. Notre Dame minus one at USC. Florida plus seven at Florida State. Georgia Tech plus 21 at Georgia. Kentucky plus nine at Louisville. South Carolina plus 19 at Clemson. uh, Blah, blah, blah. Those Utah State, Boise State, Nevada, UNLV, whatever. And then uh, Army-Navy is uh, a one-point line. Navy favored. Huh. Uh, and, I mean, nothing's crazy. Ohio State minus nine looks a little big, but they're at home, and Michigan hadn't really done anything against them in a while. The uh, the South Carolina line, like, nobody gives South Carolina any kind of love. They're a lot of people going to be eating crow. They're going to be good. I'll make money off of them. I made a lot of money last year off of them, even when they were hurt. Covered yeah. Covered a ton of lines. Yeah, oh, they covered – Bunch. Yep. I mean, what did they cover? Like nine games last yes. year. They they won. They won of, nine. No, they they covered ten games. They a, won had nine. Had a couple of money money line wins where they were plus money. Yeah, yeah. They had some uh, some big wins. Auburn, Bama, seven point line. Memphis is favored in a bunch of games this year. Uh, they who should knows? be in that conference. Yeah. South Florida lost a ton. I'm and, curious uh, about. Do you, all right, so Central we didn't talk about Blake Barnett. Games. Blake Barnett moving from Arizona State to South Florida. Uh, he'll be immediately eligible. He's got two years left. He's a graduate transfer because he redshirted a year at Alabama, and then he sat out uh, what the entire Alabama season, basically. I don't know how great he's going to be. I mean, I, I don't know how good he ever was. I, well, I mean, there's a reason why Jalen Hurts beat him out. Well, when he, he was couldn't a start freshman. at Arizona. Yeah, he couldn't start at Arizona State. Or else he would he wouldn't have set out. He had a fault to, to start like Shea did. What you think Charlie Strong has got a 
Like, it, it, does this start the downfall at, at South Florida? Or you think he's – they won 10 games last year. Central Florida just got worse. It's it, – Houston, I think, is going backwards. It's him and Memphis. All he's got to do is beat Memphis, and he can win that conference every year. We'd have to play him in the conference title game. That's fine. If he can get to the conference title game, that'd be, that'd yeah, be something. he's fine. I think Charlie Strong's a really good coach. A real good coach. Yeah. And he's not an offensive guy, so he doesn't care who the quarterback is. He'll figure out a way to win. Nah, he really doesn't care at all, that's, does he? That's why I like defensive coaches. It's because they're not dependent upon the quarterback. There you go. All right, we're going to talk uh, gambling on the next go-round, uh, the, the legalized sports gambling. You guys know what to do. Check out the website. Download the podcast. Uh, give us a review. Subscribe. iTunes. Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, all your favorite podcast apps. Coming soon to Spotify, all that wonderful stuff. And uh, we'll see you guys the next go-around. It's time for the rundown. Remember, check out winningcureseverything.com. You can give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter, at winningcures. You can follow myself, at at Gary WCE. You follow me at Chris B. Giannini, C H R I S B G I A N N I N I. You can also email the show that's winning cures everything at gmail.com. And we now have a voicemail line. That number is 551 226 9899. If you want to call and bash us for talking bad about your favorite team, or praise us, or just tell us about how awesome your team is doing, leave us a voicemail. That number again is 551 551- 226-9899 and we may toss it on the show. Thank you for supporting this show and until next time, have a good one guys.